you probably get less strange looks than you did when maybe you were Wiccan. Is that, is that a safe assumption? Or is it about no, the I, same? I, you know, it, it's funny. I, I think I get more strange looks when I tell them that I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Saints Unscripted. We are here with another special guest today uh, by the name of Joseph Seisling. I said that right, right? Correct. You did. Cool. So Joseph, um, we are really looking forward to hearing your your conversion story today, how you you discovered the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and decided to become a member. Um, I'm a little bit familiar with some of your story. but I'm just, I'm made of questions. So this is hopefully going to be really interesting. Um, but but uh, as we get going, maybe introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us where you're from and uh, give us a little bit background on yourself to set the stage here. All right. So, well, um, again, my name is Joseph Seisling. Originally, I'm from Burlington, Vermont, and I now live in Houston, Texas. I am a father of 10 kids and um, it's been an amazing life since I've joined the church. It's been something really unique, amazing. It's transformed me to being a better person and just loving people and loving the Savior even more now. So, And how long ago did you uh, get baptized? So I got baptized in 90, I believe it was 98, when I got baptized, I felt like it was almost like every other church at the time. And when I went and tried to meet with the bishop, he kind of blew me off. But we'll get to more of that in a moment, too. Um, and, and so I kind of fell away for about four years. And then I met another bishop, and he just really showed me the gospel. And uh, interestingly enough, I met his second counselor. And his second counselor asked me to join him for lunch one day. And um, he introduced me to his father. The father was the bishop that was over me when I joined the church. And he was in tears and asked for forgiveness because he's never met anyone with my background. And he didn't know how to counsel me. He didn't know how to help me um, stay away from the things that I used to be into. And so he, he did, he got, he got scared and avoided me and he begged for my forgiveness because he was a new bishop and didn't know what to do or say. And I think that's something that maybe escapes some people is that, you know, when you become a bishop, you don't necessarily have this flood of superior knowledge that washes over you and you suddenly know more than, you know, the average member. But, but, but it's really amazing how big of a difference a good teacher can make, right? Oh, definitely. Yes. Um, and, and, uh, you know, the fact that he humbly was honest with me, you know, and, 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 and really apologetic. I knew in my heart that this man was truly sincere, uh, apologetic. And I mean, I couldn't help but forgive him. Of course, yeah. Heavenly Father, you know, has ordered us to forgive those who have done us wrong. And, and I was, I was all for that, but it was just really, I mean, I wasn't looking for an apology, but I knew that his sincerity in it. So. He was just doing his best. Yes. <laughs> so now you've, you've kind of, uh, hopefully people that are watching feel a, a bit of suspense at this point, because you've talked about how your Bishop just had no idea how to, how to handle your background. What was that? What was that background? So I was born into witchcraft. Um, My mom was a high priestess. My dad was a warlock. And so for 18 years of my life, I was raised in in a coven of of, of witches and warlocks. And uh, by the time I got out, I was a gray witch. And I practiced witchcraft and and, and did spells and and, and did uh, ceremonies that are not pleasing the the Heavenly Father. (laughs) Um, And again, being raised in Vermont, which is actually a really high um, place for witches um, and Wiccans. I I didn't think it was anything different than other Christians. I didn't really have a full understanding about Christianity until several years later. Um, I didn't know what I was doing was wrong per se. It was just a lifestyle. I knew I was different growing up, 
um, because I, I never got into smoking. I never got into drinking. I never got into drugs. I was a nerd in school. I studied. I, I, I just uh, wasn't your typical uh, uh, witch, if you will, or warlock. It's kind of like uh, probably other members who said, well, I'm a member of the church, but they don't practice it that often or believe it that often. They, they question, and that, that's what I did uh, through my life. I, I questioned the, the severity of, of what, what I believed. And finally, I left home. It was a very bad situation. I went through all forms of abuse that a child shouldn't go through. And I left home and uh, moved to Florida, worked for Disney, met some friends who were Christians, found out really who God was about five years later and uh, became a Christian. Maybe I could throw this question in there because I, I don't... I don't think that uh, pretty much anyone in our audience, myself included, understands who God is to to a witch or a warlock. Is the proper term Wiccan? One of the proper terms is Wiccan, yes. Okay. And and so we don't believe in the God um, as we do um, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We believed in goddesses um, and gods of many different aspects. And we believe that there was a goddess, not really a god. And uh, she controlled all the things around the earth, <laughs> if you will. Hmm. She, was the, uh, she was the mother of the wind, mother of the fire, mother of the just life and death. Somewhat what we believe in, in our Heavenly Father, but just what we believed was, was it was it true so yeah. so it, i think a lot of people when they hear about wiccan wiccanism can i say wiccanism wiccans wiccans when what wh- when they hear about this religion um i think a lot of times they just automatically associate it with satanism or, or devil worship or things like that is that totally unrelated or it is it's totally different we believe in so Satanism um, that they believe that that Satan would rule the earth, um, and and we all know that Lucifer is is a is a liar, a deceiver, and they really practice Satan's practice really bad black magic type things. Where in Wiccans we we helped people. We we, um, we did healing stones. We did you know good readings, bad readings. Um, in, in the uh, tarot cards, um, we would help people communicate with uh, people who have passed on. And all this stuff is real, um, and, and though scary now that I look at it, um, it's just um, totally different from Satanism. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I think sometimes we, we think of certain religions as, as good and bad, and all the bad ones we just kind of lump together and don't really explore the, the nuances uh, and, and the different beliefs, but it's just, I, I don't know that I've ever, um, actually known s- someone personally who, uh, y- used to be a Wiccan, but anyway, so, so the, you, you get down to Florida, you're working for Disney. I'm assuming Disney world. I worked for Disney world. Yes. I was a six foot character. Um, so I was in, um, I did Tigger, Sheriff of Nottingham, Big Bad Wolf, Queen of Hearts. Don't get me on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I pleaded and begged not to do the Queen of Hearts um, just because it put me in a very awkward element to be flamboyant and yeah it just put me in a very just wasn't unique you. position yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so um, a friend of mine invited me to to his church it was a small um, Pentecostal church and I do mean small. I think there was like 45, 50 people in this Pente- Pentecostal church. And the pastor started walking around as he was screaming and yelling, as I felt like he was doing. And he walked right up to me and he said, if God was for you, who could ever be against you? And for some reason, that really struck a chord in my heart and in my mind. And I wept. I, I, I knew that there was a God. I didn't know where the journey was going to take me. It made me question religion. I, I tried to avoid the term uh, a Joseph Smith conversion, but it was. I mean, because when I became a Christian or saved, I, I looked at all 
a lot of the faiths, uh, Baptist, Pentecostals, Apostolic, Foursquared, and all of them seem to be different. And then they were, they were all different on how to be a Christian, what is right in the Bible, what is wrong in the Bible, what we should do as Christians, what we shouldn't do as Christians. And they had all these rules, but to me, it wasn't, it wasn't real. It wasn't like real rules. And, um, Ended up, uh, I was at home one day and I had some missionaries come knocking on my door. This is when I moved to Texas. And uh, I knew about the Mormon church. I knew what I, <laughs> what everyone told me about the Mormon church. And when uh, they came and knocked on my door, I, I was closed off. I said, uh, I don't believe in polygamy. I don't believe, you know, I don't believe in anything you guys have to share with me. And I said, don't ever come back to my apartment. And I slammed the door in their face. It was about three weeks later, they came knocking on my door again. Well, the thing is, is that now that I know more about the church, so what happened was there was a transfer. And within that transfer, uh, a new missionary knocked on my door. And the other missionary didn't have time to quickly tell him, no, not this door. Um, and uh, I opened the door and I go, what do you want? And, and he goes, oh, well, we're sorry, we're sorry. And then about four weeks later, again, there was a knock on my door and it was that new missionary that transferred over and he goes, every time we walk by your uh, apartment door, we are led by the Holy Ghost and I feel like we really want to talk to you and that Heavenly Father has a message for you. And at that point, for some reason, Heavenly Father softened my heart to where I would be able to talk to them. I had some things going on in other churches at another church and I really wanted to know the truth and I said you know what I'll let you in if you if you can answer my questions first and they sat there and they answered all my questions I'm not the smartest person I actually have dyslexia and I remember at the time there was 16 lessons and they gave me a book of mormon and they asked me to read and pray over it and they only gave me a few chapters to read and they said that they would be back out in two weeks in two weeks i read the entire book of mormon and i understood what the book of mormon was presenting to me through through heavenly father he gave me the ability to not stumble over one word and to know that Joseph Smith was a living prophet here on earth and that he was able to translate the Book of Mormon. And it just opened my eyes going, this is what I was looking for. This is a true religion. This is what God wants everyone to know. This is how Heavenly Father wants us to live. This is how Heavenly Father wants everyone to, to praise him, to worship him, to, to do service and to just be real Christians, if you will. And that's, you know, I, uh, I said, I'm ready to join. And they're like, hold on, we have 15 other lessons to go. <laughs> and uh, so we did, we uh, it ended up where I got baptized. Again, like I said, the bishop didn't know how to, uh, I was unique to the situation. And uh, he, uh, he didn't know how to counsel me or help me through my to you know the the rest of my conversion but i got baptized and fell away and then came back um due to another bishop who just really truly showed me um the love of heavenly father and what it meant to be a real servant of god and loved it try to go to the temple as soon i mean i haven't been to the temple in almost a year like everyone else <laughs> um, but i miss it and i can't wait to get back going to the temple again so uh you so you joined in did you say 98 97 so i got baptized around 96 98 i've been active now for 10 years 10 years yes and how are you feeling about it all oh it's been amazing i love this church i love our prophets i uh i, I love my you know the, the bishops that are called and the stake presidents, um, I know they're chosen by Heavenly Father, and it's been it's been a great walk. You know, it's been a, a day to day, and people will ask me if I when I go to eat, hey, do you want a wine? Do you want a beer? And it gives me an opportunity to say no. Um, you know, as a, as a member of the church, I I don't drink. Sometimes it's great conversation starters. Sometimes they're like, oh, one of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine not to be you know, too stereotypical of, of Wiccans, but I imagine that 
you probably get less strange looks than you did when maybe you were Wiccan. Is that, is that a safe assumption? Or is it about no, the I, same? I, you know, it, it's funny. I, I think I get more strange looks when I tell them that I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. <laughs> I, I think, you know, a lot of people have so many misconceptions about our faith, about our culture, um, if you will, because being a member of the church is not just being a member. It's actually a way of, of the way I look at it. It's a way of life. Yeah. We have to live our life a certain way. And, and if we don't, there's, there, there, you know, we're not recommended for the temple. We're not. And, and so, so when, when I let people know about it, I tell them it's not just a belief. It's a way of life. There's a certain way that we must live. And, and I don't see why people would want to deny that, you know, because it makes us better people. You know, and not better. I'm not trying to sound arrogant, like we're better than you, but just more pleasant people. You know, we're we're slow to anger. We're we're quick to help. We're there when when a natural disaster happens or any disaster happens. We're there for our community, no matter who they are. You know, or what they've done. We're there for them. And 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 I think when we show that in our hearts, it makes them realize that you know this is this is pretty cool. You know. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, if you can remember some of the questions that you had for those missionaries when you said, I'll let you in if you can answer my questions. So a few of them were, uh, is it true that, that uh, uh, you had multiple wives? And uh, one of the missionaries at first joked, he goes, well, this is the way it works. When you get off your mission, you get one wife. When you become uh, a Melchizedek priesthood holder, you get another wife. When you, and, and then they sort of laugh and they go, no. <laughs> you know, um, and they go, that's not true. And they explain the whole process of, you know, the polygamy aspect of things. A lot of people ask me questions that don't affect my salvation. So I just tell them, you know what? You know, it's kind of like when they ask about Heavenly Mother. It doesn't affect my salvation. You know, there's a lot of things that we don't know that Heavenly Father hasn't revealed to us. So I'm not going to try and pretend I know the answers to it. I'll find out when I when I get to you know, go through that veil and the Heavenly Father reveals everything to me. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I, um, it's quite interesting. I, missionaries tell me not to tell this story. Um, <laughs> but when I was in Vermont growing up, I remember seeing members of the church and riding their bikes around. And me and my brothers, I had four brothers, we would actually walk up to them. I was probably 10, and I asked one of the missionaries for one of their books. I called it a book. And they would give it to us, and they seemed really happy about it, going, oh, wow, these kids are asking for a Book of Mormon. And, um, and we would tear it up and throw it in their face and run. Ooh. <laughs> Ouch. I, I, and and I remember, I remember um, talking to the bishop, and I said, I don't even know if you guys will even allow me into your church. And I explained that story to them. You know, and they said, well, it's only a book. You know, what they were trying to say that, you know, it was material, yeah. you know. And so I, uh, yeah, I, missionaries get, like, you know, when I tell that story, I, I've seen one missionary get, like, really rent in the face. And I, I have out of the missionary goes, don't ever tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you were only 10. <laughs> I was only 10. I was the age of accountability. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. Oh, Wow. Well, Joseph, that's a fascinating story. We're, we're going to end this call, and I still have questions for you, by the way. But uh, I guess my last question for you in conclusion here would be to those people that might see the missionaries and want to rip up a Book of Mormon in their face, or to those people who maybe just have some misconceptions about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, maybe they're just curious about learning more but not converting, or maybe they are actually considering possibly joining our faith, what advice would you have for them? I would tell them to really listen to the missionaries. Don't go to websites and look up stuff about about our faith. Don't, you know, go to the LDS uh, websites and stuff like that, but really pray. If you're going to pray, pray for the answer and allow Heavenly Father to give you that knowledge. I remember seeing a marquee on the internet one day that said, uh, don't pray about the Book of Mormon. That's how they get you. <laughs> I've seen that. Yeah. Pray about it. 
and, and, and truly pray for those, for those missionaries that are teaching them. This church is true. This church is amazing and, and it's real. You may not understand some of the aspects of our stuff. And yes, there's stuff that in our lives that we must give up, but it's not to say we can't have fun because we have fun all the time. Two months ago, I had a cornhole competition over at our, at our house. A bunch of elders came over, and we played cornhole. We had a barbecue. We drank root beer, and we're planning a fishing trip. So we can have fun without the alcohol. We can have fun without the cursing. We can have fun without gossiping or, or telling dirty jokes. This church is just amazing. It's loving, and it's real. It is so, so real. Joseph Seisling, thank you so much for your story. Thank you for your testimony. It's inspiring. It's interesting. We're happy to, to have you. I don't know why I'm saying we, like I speak for the church or something. I'm, I'm happy to call you my brother. And uh, thanks for sharing your story with us today. No problem. You have a wonderful day. Now. You too. Thanks, Joseph.